Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Wrong to Strong Chicago. I'm your host. My name is Omar Calvillo, and, and tonight I have my guest here. His name is Jimmy uh, S- S- Sutherland. Uh, I met this brother, it had to be, I believe it was like a month ago. I was invited out to a retreat. Uh, the retreat took place in Michigan, uh, and I was invited out there by uh, Pastor Indio from uh, Come Alive Church, and I believe they're located in Portage, in Port- Portage, Indiana. Uh, so I, I met this brother there. So man, th- th- thanks for being on here, brother. Hey, thank you, man. Thank you for okay. inviting me. Uh, no problem. Hey, you you want to tell us a, a little bit about yourself, Jimmy? Uh, yeah. Uh, my name is Jimmy Sutherland. Um, I'm 55 years old. Uh, I'm currently a, a steel worker. Um, married. Uh, I have uh, three children. Uh, five total. Uh, my wife has two children, but those are my children as yeah. well. So I've got five. Uh, twin sons. Uh, they'll be 25 Friday. Uh, my daughter is 29. My son is uh, 28, and my other daughter is 20. She'll be 22. Man, nice. Oh, uh, I just had my second uh, grandchild. Nice, nice. Yeah, Congratulations. Got, thank you, bro. Thank you. I have a, a six a six year old grandson and a three month old granddaughter. Nice. Yeah. Man, hey, the family keys are expanding. That's, that's always a blessing there. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, uh, hey, brother, um, well, we, before we get to it, man, I, I talked to this brother at, at the retreat. We had a conversation, and we're, we're going to get to some of the stuff you're doing as far as ministry. Mm. Uh, but just in the brief, I believe we talked for maybe like 10 minutes. Right. Uh, like just this man's story, like, man, I, I, had a, I told him right away, man, I got to have you on the podcast one day. And uh, we ex- exchanged numbers, and, and, here, and here we are, you know. Right. But uh, I just thank you for driving all the way out here. I believe it was an right. hour and five minutes. Yeah, a little right? over an hour, yeah. yeah hey. It wasn't bad. It okay. Wasn't bad. It was nice. nice. Yeah. All right, brother. So, hey, you know what? Can you tell us um, where, where, did you, where did you grow up at? What was that um, city called? Mm-hmm. And maybe if you could describe it, you know, for those that are listening, those that okay. maybe n- 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 never been out there. Okay. Uh, I grew up in uh, uh, East Chicago, Indiana. I don't know if it's right next to Gary, Hammond, uh, like that. I grew up in, uh, in a section called In the Harbor because that was a big thing back in East Chicago. You had the East Chicago side and then you had the Harbor side, you know, which I don't even know what that really what that meant. <laughs> okay, now that right, I'm thinking right. about it, but yeah, I was... Uh, I grew up in the harbor. Uh, like I said, I was born in 1968, so I grew up in the uh, you know, 70s and 80s. Okay. Um, I got two younger sisters, uh, mom and dad. They're still they're still together. Oh, uh, man, praise God. Praise God, yeah. yeah, thank, yeah. thank God they're still alive. They just celebrated their 56th wedding anniversary. Wow. Yeah. Um, growing up uh, in East Chicago, it was... Uh, it was a Hispanic, uh, African American mostly, you know. Okay. Uh, and it was funny because I I think back now of how times change, but you know, like growing up in the eighties, you know, there was you know, you use these to fight. Okay. And it was almost like uh, the old breakdancing movies, you know, like we're gonna have a breakdance, like me and you are <laughs> opposing gang members, okay, yeah, and yeah. we're gonna we're gonna breakdance. So that's how we're gonna handle things, you okay. know. And just how times change, how you know how the world is. Well, yeah. today, man, it was so simple back then where we could just, you know, have a dance off, you okay. know, too bad we can't do that now, you know, but, um, yeah, uh, my dad was, uh, was a hard worker. Okay. Uh, he was always, you know, doing something, you know, he, he worked for the city and then, uh, everybody seemed to call him to fix things. So when he got home from work, he was over at so-and-so's house fixing the, the dryer and this and that. Oh, no way. Oh, yeah, he was really doing all of that. And then, and my mom, she uh, she stayed home, you know. Um, played, uh, I played a lot of sports when I was a kid. Okay. Um, trying to keep myself out of trouble. Yeah. You know, because I think I always had it in my mind that, you know, not that I was wanting to do bad, but I just like, man, I know stuff is out there that I don't need to be getting into. Yeah. So I just want to stay to myself and, 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 and uh, play sports and, and work out. And I started working out. I always remember, I remember my dad brought me a, he was working like in a vacant, rehabbing vacant apartments for the city and he brought okay. home a little raggedy weight bench. Yeah. I mean, it was bent up, tore up, you know, <laughs> no had some duct tape around it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, he was like, hey, you, you want this? I was probably about 12 and I was like, oh yeah, absolutely. So 12 years old, I was in the basement, I had my little boom box, my okay. little boom box yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, you know, back then, yo, yo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the, the the tapes back then. Oh still, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, the, yeah, 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 the, yeah, the cassettes. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. Yep. So so so, what was your your go to mu- mu- music back then to work out? 
oh man, back then it was probably like Run DMC, yeah. and, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, you know what's crazy? Uh, my first uh, rap tape was uh, Run DMC, uh, Tougher Than Leather. Yeah. That was the soundtrack to a movie they had made. Uh-huh. So I remember I was in uh, Montgomery Wards. That was an old school store, right? Uh-huh. And they had like a, um, a 55-gallon barrel full of just tapes, all typo, just mixed in there. Uh-huh. And I'm walking, and it was in the 80s, so I had to be... I'm guessing I was born in 78. You said 68. I was 78. So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so I was, let's say 10 years old. I look and I just seen how cool they were. They were in their Adidas jumpsuits uh-huh. with the gold chain with the Kango. And yeah. The, so, like, man, it looked cool. I bought it. Man, that was my first uh, rap uh, tape I bought. And from there, I was hooked, man. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Hooked on hip hop, rap. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Uh, no, that's funny you bring that up. So, you, you got the weight set down there where you. Did, yeah. did you get into it? Like, you, uh, like lifting? Um. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did. That was like. Uh, and I look back on it, that was kind of like my piece. I would just go in the basement, close the door, to put the boombox blast, and you know, and, and just work out. Right. You know, trying to stay out of trouble, you know. Um, you know, I, I look back and it's like, man, I, I think about my kids. Um, like I said, my boys are 25, so they graduated, what, seven years ago. Yeah. Uh, my baby girl, she's 22, so she graduated four years ago. So I look at the different stories. Like, I remember, like, one young man, got shot when I was, you know, he, he was murdered when I was oh, in high school, right? Okay, right. So you're talking mid-80s. Yeah. And then I think about my kids, how it's like, man, like today's society everywhere, it's almost like numb where, you know, I can't imagine like how many times I would, you know, uh, talk to my sons and they're like, yeah, so-and-so got killed or so, you know, and I'm like, man, they're just like, you know, they're in their high school career, you know, their high school four years, you know, they lost four, five, six, seven friends. To, to gun violence and just right. violence in general, man. I'm like, man, you know, it goes back to that. Why can't we just break dance it off? Yeah, yeah, you know right, I mean? right. But, yeah. Now, and you're right. I, I know you mentioned just that one that you still remember because back yeah. then it was like, it wasn't common. Right. So it was like, I'm sure back then it like hurt, yeah. hurt the community, hurt the family, friends. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and now, like you mentioned, it's almost like, oh, another one, another yeah. one. And, and just keep going like like nothing, right? And, right. I mean, not, not like nothing, but in a sense, yeah, like more uh, de- de- desensitized, I think is yeah. the word, right? To yeah. to the, the mm-hmm. death and loss. Yeah. But uh, I, you know what? At the age of 12, I know you mentioned, you know, you like to stay to yourself so you wouldn't get in trouble. Now, what, what was going on in that neighborhood? How how was that neighborhood outside? Was it, you know, a lot of gang activity, drugs? What, um, what was going on out there? There was, some, there was some. You know, like I said, back, maybe I was so secluded to it because okay. I stayed away from it. Right. You know? I would be just at the basketball court all day, come home, you know, lift weights. And, and uh, I'm not going to lie, I really wasn't about that schoolwork. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah. did, I didn't, yeah. I did the bare minimum to try yeah, to yeah. just, you know, get by okay. and, and graduate. Right, right. Know? But yeah, there was, there was drugs and there was stuff that was going on drinking and, and, and stuff like that, you know. And then I just, uh, you know, it, it was God. It was kind of, I know he was watching over me. And, and 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 covering me even when I didn't even have a clue about God. Yeah. So so, so 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 you were getting into that to the drinking and drugs or or just uh, around you? No, it was just around me. Okay. But I I knew that I was like, man, I don't I don't I just don't want I don't want no no part of that because yeah. I know even at that young age, I knew where it could lead. Yeah. You know, I I've had friends that got in trouble and you know got into some serious stuff. So it's just like, man, I don't want to. You know, I had enough sense and, and thank god that he just held me and, and didn't let me go all yeah you know oh that happened later on when i when i got grown when i figured yeah. out when i was grown that's when i lost <laughs> you know that's when i just you know yeah now let, let, let me ask you like, like looking back um did, did it help that dad was around i know you mentioned 50 they just celebrated 56 years of marriage so yeah like l- l- looking back let's say your younger age around that age of 12 and all that like mm-hmm. The fact that mom and dad were together, like, uh, how do you view that? Like, it helped. Yeah, you? that was that was that was a good thing. That was a good thing. Uh, my dad was always, my dad was real quiet. He didn't really, he didn't really say too much. Okay, you know, it, it almost be like the, my mom was the, the disciplinarian, and it was. I actually remember a couple of times where I don't know what I did. It probably was maybe ten years old, and I got a I got a whooping from my mom. A couple of hours later, dad comes home from work, and she was telling him about it. She was like, "Okay," she was like, "Go whoop him." He was like, didn't you just do that already? Right, right, right. He's like, no, I get him again. Oh, yeah. He just looked at me like, (laughs) (laughs) 
mom said yeah, you know yeah, so yeah. that type of that type of thing oh, okay but, you know so so you didn't maybe connect with him as much or how, how would you describe that like um i tried to connect once again through through sports okay. i was a big i was a big uh baseball player right um i was you know all conference all the stuff in high school oh, and i had some some uh teams some college teams and stuff that were looking at me you know you had, you had to believe this is like 1986 right. so it wasn't like you can youtube or whatever else it was actually <laughs> yeah. like i got i got a letter in the mail from a college and then you know i got to get on the house phone yeah and, and call them back you know that type of that type right of thing. right right but my dad played baseball as a kid and stuff okay. so i think that was my trying to uh trying to imp not, not impress him but just get him yeah in interested in wanting to come out to see what i was doing right right you know okay so what was he able yeah. to like to come out and yeah he support? was he was he was supportive yeah yeah and he would come out and and, and support me and, and stuff you know right right nice no that's yeah. good and uh, okay so age of 12 so let, let, let's go like into your teenage years maybe high school uh, mm. how does your life begin to change or what begins to happen around that age for you um i always knew that i wanted to get out of the area okay okay i was like man i i, I want to get out of here i want to uh explore the world see the you know see the world you know and uh i knew that i honestly knew that college wasn't going to be the thing okay well, going I, back to I, you. Barely, i barely made it through school yeah, in yeah, high yeah. school you know and uh so that's that's how uh the marine corps came about you know uh i was like sitting there watching the commercials oh know, no way <laughs> a few of the proud you know and i was like man if i'm gonna do it i honestly Once again, honestly, I looked at it and said, man, those uniforms are cool. I said, I bet you all the girls like those uniforms. That was my decision <laughs> hey, on, hey, on what, I, what I did, yeah, you yeah. know? So, uh, yeah, when I was uh, 18, um, you know, we, people talk about what their first job was. Right. And, and my first job, I never had a job growing up, like in high school. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. So my first job was a uh, United States Marine at, at 18. <laughs> wow. You know? So Now, uh, now uh, before you made this choice, Uh, did anybody in your family or friend uh, serve military or? Um, I had uh, an uncle, okay, who was in the Air Force, uh, and that was that was about it. Um, it's funny that we bring because I wanted to bring him up because uh, how how my life came about. Uh, he's actually the one that helped me uh, come to where I am today. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Man, so maybe we'll so talk about he, him a little yeah, bit we'll later. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. Yo, okay, this, yeah, yeah. This, he, this, he, this he ties into the story. Right okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah, for sure. Right there. So, so basically, you see the commercial, man. I want that uniform, so I get the girls. Yeah. Um, when when you finally decided like to sign, I guess you had to sign some paperwork. Mm -hmm. uh, did mom and dad know, or how, how, how did that? How did the conversation go? Or? Um, yeah, I actually came home and and my mom was outside doing something, and I and I told her that I, that I signed up. She just looked at me, and I thought you were going just to talk. And I was like, I did, and I signed up. <laughs> you know, there was, you know, my childhood wasn't wasn't perfect. There okay. was some, there was some stuff that that was going on uh, that 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 uh, accelerated my my want to get away from home. Gotcha. Okay. You know, there there was some. Uh, You know, everybody. You need discipline, but there was some. There was some discipline that went above and beyond what discipline should have been. Gotcha. So, I mean, that you know, that was you know, that was like my, my acceleration. It's like you know what, I need to go ahead and and make a move. You know, right. because I I found myself at an early age um, with being angry. Okay, being angry, and then that anger. You know, you you know, you're talking 14, 15 year old kid, young man, uh, being angry, and then being depressed. And being angry again, you know. Yeah. So it was all that. That was my. That was there. That was that was that was something that I was dealing with. I believe from from an early age. Okay. So so that propelled you, pushed you to hey, let, let, let me get out of here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> you signed up. How, how did that look? Uh, boot camp. Where where what, what part of the country did you go to? Uh, like? I went to San Diego. Okay. MCRD, uh, San Diego. Um, that was. That was pretty cool because I got to seem like I got to get some of this aggression out, you know, that I had. But it turned come kind of find out it wasn't it wasn't enough because that wasn't that wasn't the problem, right? You know, okay. So, but yeah, boot camp was in was in uh, San Diego. Um, after boot camp, uh, they asked me if because I was the right height, the right size, requirement wise, if I wanted to go to Washington D.C. and guard the president. 
So I'm like, wow, I'm going to have this uniform, guarding the president. Honestly, there's more girls. That was always, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, I mean, hey, I was, hey, you know. Got to keep it real, man. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, so it's like I was always trying to look for, look for respect yeah. out of either lifting weights or trying to impress, you know, and then deep down inside, inside I was hurting. I was right. hurting. I was angry. I was depressed. Mm. And that goes back all the way from a young man. Until now, now that's going. Now that's into the Marine Corps, right? You know. So, so did did, did you end up going uh, to Washington? Or? Yeah, I was. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was. Who, 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 who was the president at that time? Uh, it was the last of Reagan and okay. the first of George H. Bush. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's how old I am, man. It's way back. <laughs> now I remember him. You know, Ronald Reagan and <laughs> yeah. Bush. Yeah. Okay, so you go over there, and how 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 was life out there? How much time did you spend out there? Uh, I spent the rest of my time out there. Yeah, I liked it so much that when I got out, I stayed. I stayed out there. Okay, and got a job, uh, and I stayed out there for a few more years. So, so what'd you yeah. do? Just uh, four years? Yeah. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. And you, you didn't. You don't want to like uh, stay in there as uh, um, as far as Marine. Of course, if you could look back, if I look right. back, and I'm like, yeah, absolutely, I should have. But at the time, um, I think they wanted to send me to Cuba. You know, and they were like, "We'll give you four thousand dollar reenlistment and send you to Cuba." And, you know, back then there was no cell phones. There was no. So it's like you know, historic, uh, prehistoric, you know, right. it's like, man, I really don't want to go to Cuba. Right. $4,000. Yeah. You know, and, and in Cuba, they have like a base, right? Yeah. Or, uh, Gu- uh, Guantanamo Bay. Oh, right. Gitmo. Yeah. 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 Gitmo. Yeah. That became famous later on when yeah. they started sending a bunch of people over. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Man, I was right. thinking about that. Yeah. Right. Okay. So and that was it. So what, 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 what a job did you get out there? Like what were you doing out there? Uh, if you, if you watch the news and you see a Marine standing at the door, and you see the president or somebody walk by that that would have been me just standing. Oh, okay. There. So yeah, it was all you know. Like once again, it was always about trying to impress, right? You know, trying to get approval, whether it was from you know my parents or f- from whoever it was. But it goes back to that hurt, yeah, that hurt that I was carrying. And this all this was you know God revealed to me years later on. Right, you know, right. I didn't know that. I didn't notice at the time. I'm speaking of it right now. Now I see it. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it, I, I just carried that. Uh, so long that, that I tried to just layer what I was doing, thinking right. that that was going to go ahead and solve my problems, but yeah. it didn't because I was just out there drinking and and being wild. Right, you know? right. Okay, so so you, you did the four years you got out, and w- w- what did you do as far as like a c- civilian work? I guess after um, I got a I got a job with a contractor at the Washington Naval Yard where I was standing post. Okay, uh, rehabbing. Uh, all these admirals' houses. So my first job was technically where I was stationed at. Okay. You know, so I got out and then I went right back to work, but I went back to work there as a civilian. Right, right. You know. And uh, how how yeah. uh, how long did you do that for there? Um, I did that for a couple of years. Okay. Yeah. All right. And how, how, yeah. how was the life out there, like, I guess, compared to any other place you were at? Well, it's when I was at that time, when I was in Washington, D.C., D.C. was the murder capital of the world. So it was it was rough out there. I mean, there was people getting, you know, shot left and right. Um, I was out there when the mayor, uh, Mayor uh, Barry, was. I don't know if you remember that guy caught in a hotel with crack doing, cocaine, doing right? Crack cocaine, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When was that? The uh, early nineties. That was yeah. That was about the early maybe nineteen ninety. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. It's crazy. This uh, <laughs> some stuff yeah. you don't forget, like certain names and right. things that happen. Yeah. Right. Because back then it was really big, and mm-hmm. you know, like it wasn't that common for people to get caught doing that that, that, that type right. of drug or yeah 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 that's yeah, crazy yeah yeah so man so you you went from one bad area to somewhere worse yeah and like me when i think about washington dc I, I would think man that's one of the safest places to be at but apparently not huh yeah like, it's it's um i've been back a couple of times because i've been uh wanting to take my my wife back there so we went we've been back there twice and uh i always remember they they closed it now, but when I was stationed there, uh, like you said, you know, you got the capital, and that's the capital of the United States, and, and it's we're the most powerful country in the world. But there was a homeless park, a park where all the homeless people lived. I mean, they had refrigerator boxes and buggies and stuff right across the street from the White House. No way. And when CNN would come to film stuff, they would come and they would open up their cars, and they would have boxes of McDonald's hamburgers. And they would pass out hamburgers to the homeless people to tell them to pack up their stuff so it's not seen on the news. No way! I, I never yeah, knew. Yeah, that. it's 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 yeah, it's pretty wild, you know. Man, yeah. 
Yeah, it's probably for one of the <laughs> the most powerful countries, uh, mm-hmm. the main guy's house and all that to be outside his house. Yeah. That's yeah. way out. Yeah. Okay, so d- during this time, is there anything sig- significant that happens like during those years there or like? Um, I was just, uh, I was just lost, man. I was just drinking, um, you know, fornicating. It's, it, I was just like I had no care in the world. I didn't care about tomorrow. I didn't, didn't know if I was going to see tomorrow, you know, and I really didn't care because that hurt and that it was just, was just so deep. You know, just from from the childhood and and and, and the anger and, and they were talking to, never really getting any help about it or whatever. Right. You know, always just you know, do, dealing with the anger. I lifted weights. Well, that just got your testosterone more. Yeah, you know. joining the Marine Corps that that got my testosterone more. You know, so it's just like I wasn't I wasn't doing anything to deal with what was going on. Right, in a you sense, know? making it worse. Like even though yeah. you you might have been feeling better, but yeah. I would or imagine. making it worse with 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 alcohol and right. and you know yeah I was making it real bad. Okay, you know? and then did this go on for a while as far as like that lifestyle, just drinking and yeah, that went on for that went on for a while uh, for for some years. Even when I came back to this area, okay, um, I came back here um, ninety ninety three, and uh, it's the same thing. You know, I was, I was just drinking and partying here, and um, I ran into. Uh, this girl I went to school with, who she was my first, my first wife, my oh. ex-wife now. Oh, you, 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 you were uh, married uh, before, yes, yes. Okay. before my wife now, yeah. Okay, and um, it was the same thing. I, I, I was like, okay, well, maybe if I, I come back home. First of all, I never imagined myself coming back here. Okay, because here I was. That was another thing I was dealing with. I thought I was just some tough bad dude that was guarding the president and a Marine Corps, and now I'm back where I grew up at. You know, so I, that that was a bad bad thing to be even to be thinking about that. You know how my mind was was working. So I ran into this young lady I went to school with. We started dating, and I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe if I settle down, you know, I'm I'm trying to solve my own problems. Yeah, I wasn't reaching out to the one who could solve my problems. I was trying to do it. Yeah. Okay, and um, you know, I I never changed. I was still. Uh, uh, drinking and partying and, and when we eventually got married um, committing adultery still drinking and in my mind I was justifying what I was doing uh, as far as well I take you know at the time I, my daughter was born in 94 and my twins were born in 98 so by that time we had been together about four years got three kids now and uh, my my thinking was, well, I take care of the family and and I and I work, so I can pretty much do what I want. Yeah. And and that was the that's the worst worst thing the worst thing to think, you know. Right, right. So yeah, it, it just it just went on and went on, and, and then my my ex wife, my kids' moms, she would she would go to church, okay, faithfully, and I never went once. I would be you know hung over on the couch on Sunday. No, uh, that, that ain't for me. You guys go ahead. Right. You know. No, no. Be, be, before this, like growing up, did uh, faith play a part in your your household, mom and dad, or? Uh, no. Okay. No. I mean, we maybe my whole life we might have went to church a handful of times, and you know, maybe Christmas Eve service or something like that. And right. it was uh, it was uh, like a Catholic church. Okay. And I didn't understand anything that was going on, so I. And like I said, it was you know Easter and Christmas here, yeah. and that was about it. That was it. So, okay. Yeah. So so uh, back to uh, your wife was going to church. You're yeah. drunk, you know, hung over on the couch, and mm-hmm. uh, how, what 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 ends up happening uh, in the relationship, or uh, um, what, what what changes there? Or? We we it was real it was real bad. So I I left. Okay. I left them, and uh, we eventually got divorced, and. Um, I was still, you know, still doing the same things, you know. I was like, okay, well, I'm not married now, but now I'm fornicating, I'm drinking, I'm still, I'm still, I'm angry. I mean, I was angry where there was rage. Some of the stuff, I, you know, I did. I, I got scars from uh, busting through storm windows from the front door, and, you know, that type of that type of stuff. You right, know? right. So, uh, you know, that went on for uh, for some years, for man, ten, twelve years. Okay, you know, and um, is where uh, my uncle comes. Okay, comes all right. In, yeah, right? Yeah. What 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 was his name? John. John. Okay, my yeah, yeah. John. Yeah, um, 
he was, I didn't even realize this, but I was like, man, uh, one night I was sitting there probably hung over or whatever. And I was like, man, we're, I'm living, I'm living Uncle John's life, even though he's, you know, 22 years older than me or something like that, you know, but I'm living, he was in the Air Force, partying, drinking, whatever. I was doing the same thing. Anger. He had anger, anger. And I'm like, man. So uh, I hadn't seen him for, for some years. Okay. Years. And um, this was, and this was only uh, 2017. Okay. Since I, this this guy just got a hold of me and I, you know, I'm living for the Lord now. So, you know, we're not talking like, we're just talking six, a little over six years ago. Right. But I, I knew that something, you know, God was working on me and I was, I was fighting all this time. And uh, I just felt like, man, I need to reach out to him. You know, and I was like, who said, who said that? You know, so I got a hold of my mom and I said, hey, you got his number? So she probably, she gave him his number and she probably was like, what is, you know. Now, did, did you know he was uh, yes. seek, seeking God at that time? Yes. Okay. I, oh. I, I, I knew he had changed his life and okay. he was serving the Lord. Through, through who? Like, how did you hear that? Or um, Actually, by other family. But they were they weren't doing it in the most positive way, almost like maybe like mocking them or something. Yes, yeah. man, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, you know. So um, I was like, man, I I, I want to reach out to this this guy. So I I think I texted him and you know, I was like, hey, this your nephew Jimmy? Yeah. Uh, you got a minute? You think we could hook up? So uh, he was like, yeah. So we did shortly thereafter, and that's how things. Um, started to, started to change. We sat down and had uh, sat down and had breakfast, at the restaurant. We started talking, and uh, I shared with him how I was feeling, and uh, you know, we kind of we caught up on we caught up because we hadn't I hadn't seen him probably in ten years. Right. So he was telling me what was going on and, and stuff, and I'm thinking of like I, I remember the man from before, and I'm like I'm looking at this dude, and I'm like I don't even know this dude, you know? <laughs> no way, you know? It was it was that big of a change. Yeah, huh? yeah. So uh, he was like uh, telling me, you know, how what God is doing and, 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 and how he changed his life. And, uh, you know, and I'm just sitting there like, man, for real, it's possible. I didn't think it was possible. You know, like all the stuff I did and all, you know, and he did the same thing, you know, some of the same things. Right, right, right. You know, so, yeah, that's how it all. And he, he was like, uh, you know, uh, you, you know what? Uh, <laughs> it got so bad. Let me go. Let me back. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I want to share. I want to share something because I think this is somebody needs to hear this. Yeah. Um, in 2003, so my sons were five. My daughter was nine. I was drinking heavily, like I always was. And my ex-wife, she took the kids and went somewhere, probably to her mom's house. And I was sitting um, on the back porch, drinking. Whatever I was drinking, Hennessy, I believe it was, out of, straight out of the bottle, and I started hearing them. I started hearing the, the, the devil speak, and he was telling me, "You know what, man? What, what are you doing? Why don't you just, just end it? You, you're not a man. You not take care of your family. You're you're a loser. You know, just, you know, what are you doing? Just do it." So I know what he was talking about. I had I had weapons. I had guns. You know, um, I was in Marine Corps, and at this time. <laughs> There's a lot of, I mean, I messed up. I didn't tell you about this. I got a job. I was with the sheriff's department. I was working in the jail. Okay. So I know about weapons. All right. So um, I was sitting out back and uh, on the steps, drinking out of the bottle. I had my loaded 45 there. And, and uh, the devil said, go ahead and do it. I took the bait. I took that pistol and I, and I, and I made sure I racked one in the chamber and I put that pistol in my mouth. And I was shaking. I remember, like, this was, so this is 20 years ago. I was shaking, crying, sweating, scared, mad. Every emotion that you could even imagine you can have, I had it. And pull it, pull it. And I pulled the trigger. And I jumped because I was scared, of course. Nothing happened. So I got mad because I got mad because that was my... That was my, that, that's what I was dealing with, was right. anger. And I slammed that pistol on the, on the step next to me, and that, that pistol fired a round off. And I, 
I looked, I didn't know at the time, but I didn't even think about trying it again because I was too exhausted, you know, but it was, it was God preventing me from trying it again because years later, now we go back up to 2017. Right, right, with your, with your right. Uncle John. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now we're back in 2017. I saw God's hand on that pistol. When I, when, I, when I had a quick vision, I saw his hand on that pistol, covering that pistol and putting it down. So that was, you know, and all that started happening when I started talking to my uncle. You know, God was, was just revealing stuff to me. Wow. And I still wasn't, I was confused. I was like, man, I don't know. What do I do next? What do I do? I don't know, you know. And my uncle was like, hey, man, you know, come to church. Church? Oh, man, I, you know, I got to get dressed up. I gotta, you know, the simple, silly questions. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, whatever. right, right, yeah. But no, he, he, he invited, uh, invited me to church. And at the time, I was in a relationship with a young lady. Um, and I was, I was doing the same thing. I was, you know, we were both not right, you yeah. know, drinking or whatever. And, um, I was angry, depressed, and it was, I was abusive to myself. You know what I'm saying? Like physically, verbally, to, mentally to myself, but it was affecting her, my girlfriend at the time. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, when I had talked to my uncle about what was going on in my head and in my life, I called her, right, and said, hey, can you meet us at this restaurant? She's probably like, what? You know, we just probably had an argument the day before or whatever. But yeah, she, yeah. But she came. She came. And uh, I introduced her to my uncle, and I said, uh, hey, this is, uh, this is Carrie. Carrie, this is my Uncle John. And that was, that was about it, you know. So... Fast forward, like, I don't know, a couple of weeks later, we, we did go, to, we went to church. Right. And I was still dealing with stuff. And we would come to church on Sunday. We would meet each other, my girlfriend and I, on Sunday. We would sit in church. After church, we would go get in her car, I would get in my car, and well, I wouldn't see her until next Sunday because I was living in seclusion, in darkness. I would go home, I would have the curtains down, the shades down, the lights off, okay, and the the, the 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 enemy started back that that talk again that I heard from years back. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So because there was there was times, it was a few times I even tried it with pills. I mean, I took. I mean, I'm not talking about nothing you get from Walgreens. I was like on these meds, like from a psych doctor. Yeah. I took like a whole bottle of pills. It just put me to sleep. I woke up. It took me to the hospital. The doctor was like, "Man, what the heck, you're." Your liver, every, everything's good. You're normal. What's, you know, we don't even understand. Well, now I understand. Yeah. Okay. At the hand. time, I didn't. But now I understand. So, man, it's like God's had his hand on my life. Right. So many, just each and every moment, but these particular moments that that he was revealing to me. Yeah. You know, that I was going through, and I wasn't even thinking nothing of it. So, so these moments of, like, when you, you were in darkness, you know, you wanted to cover the blinds. This is at the time where, where you were going to church? Right at the same time, I okay. was still going. I was, I was going to church, and then I was still like, you know, angry and, yeah. and depressed. So God was, God was yeah. massaging so the, my the, heart. The, there was, there was a battle there, there, right? Yes. Like a spiritual battle happening mm -hmm. there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that went on for for uh, for a few months. I had broke up with this young lady, and I, I moved to be closer to my job. And, you know, she would call me, she would check on me, she would, you know, she didn't, I thank God for this woman, I'll tell y'all right now, that woman's my wife right now. Oh, no but, way, praise God. <laughs> okay. And we serve the Lord together, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thank God that she didn't give up on me, man. man. You know, now, did was, she continue going to church, or, at that, that point, or was yeah, she? Yeah, we, we, we both, we both were going, yeah. and then going our separate ways, gotcha. okay. and then things just started to change. Think my thinking started to change. Her thinking, I think, her, her thinking started to change. And, man, God was just working on you, working on you, work, you know. And, uh, yeah, that that's how it was. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a transition where, we, you know, we went from being so messed up to 
beautiful. And that's the way God. <laughs> that's the way God works. Yeah. Man. It's like, you know, transformation, healing, mm-hmm. and yes. from darkness to light, man. That's yeah. like what, what, uh, what. So for you, do you feel like it was a gradual change, or do you feel maybe there was a day when like a there was like a maybe a breakthrough for you? Uh, how would you uh, describe that? I guess uh, April seventeenth, two thousand seventeen. I, that's the day of breakthrough. I was going through some things where we had just started going to church, a couple maybe a couple Sundays, and I'm sitting. I was sitting on the floor of this house that I moved out from a girlfriend. I'm sitting and I got the bl- blinds down, whatever. I just want to be by myself. And then I hear I hear the devil talking about, man, you still ain't no good. You know, you why are you still here? Do it again. Do it right this time. And uh, for the first time in my life that night, I just cried out to God. I mean, I literally screamed. I'm like, God, help me, Jesus, help me. I don't even know. I, I said something to the fact of, I don't even know if you can love me with all the stuff I've done. But, man, I can't do this no more. I'm scared. I hurt. God just... Help me, help me, help me. And I probably said that 50 times. Help me, help me. And um, man, uh, that night went by so quick. I was up all night. I didn't sleep. I was up all night, but that, it, it felt like it was like an hour. And next thing I know, the sun was coming up, you know, and I was sitting on the same spot yeah. on the floor looking at the TV that wasn't on and just sobbing and weeping, you know, and um, I just, I felt like, man, I felt like a release. Yeah. You know, I just felt like something like, you know, that yoke was, you know, and I didn't know at the time what a yoke was or nothing, you know, oh, like burden. a burden. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, know, yeah. yeah. So I didn't, I didn't know. I was like, man, I just, you know, what's going on? And I'm looking and I hear the birds. And it's, I mean, I thought the birds was in my house. You know, they're out there in the trees, and I'm just like, tweet, tweet, tweet. And I was like, man, that sounds beautiful. You know? And I'm like, did I just say that? What? what you know? And I'm serious. That's how I was just sitting there. And I was like, man. And, and at the same time, it's looked like I felt like I was at the gym working out because I was just like I had been doing a 1,000 push-ups. Like, my shirt was drenched and everything. And I was I didn't really realize. I mean, I sat on the floor all night, which I thought it was all night. I mean, yeah. you know? And, uh you know, I, I felt the presence of God and all I, I felt, I felt a, a warmth come over my body yeah. and I literally heard, are you done? Are you finished? Because if you are, I'm ready. I'm here. I've, I've always been here, you know, and at that moment, man, I just start bawling because I was like, I, 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 I felt the presence and I heard God just, you know, it was like a, it was a calm voice but it was stern and it was just like man i felt safe you know like i can't even explain it like i just felt safe as big as i am thinking i'm all tough and everything i was just like i just felt like a little kid like i just wanted to like you know when you're a toddler when you when your son reaches up to pick, get picked up by dad yeah. that's how i felt man. you know and that was just i was 49 years old i'm 55 now so i was right. You know, we're not talking, and I was, I was a grown man. I was whatever. I'm like, man, so I try to tell people, you know, people, you know, I, I run into guys at work or whatever, and they always say, man, I, man, you don't know what I've done. I've done, bro, let me tell you a story. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what I feel like telling. Let, sit down. You got a minute? Let me tell you, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, after that, and I tell people, man, it's not, you know, it's not a light switch. We're like, man, boom, everything's perfect. Because once you decide, you know, like like for me, I tell everybody, man, once you decide, like, yeah, man, I want to live for God. I want to glorify God in everything I do. The devil's going to come at you even more. Yes, sir. Because if you're not, if you're not doing that, then he's like, okay, this, this fool's going to set himself up, yeah. you know? Yeah. But when you go to totally opposite, man, I want to glorify God. I'm going to do this. And, and then then the devil's going to be like, oh, hold on. Wait a minute. I got, I got my work cut out. Yeah. You know? Yes, sir. So it, it gets tough. It doesn't get easier. It gets no. tough. But knowing who we have in our corner, you know, is, is you know, it, it's, it's, I don't, you know, I look back and I'm like, man, I, 
but it's all experience. It was God's timing. Yeah. Because I, I think to myself, man, I could wish I would have done this. But like, no, no, this is all God's purpose. Yeah, uh, God's purpose, timing. Plan, yep. His plan, his purpose, whatever. Why? To 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 get me here at, to this moment to be talking to my brother over here about the faithfulness of God and 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 you know, it's all about God. It's not yes. about you or me or nothing, man. It's just like uh Daniel four two, where it says, uh you're, it's my pleasure to tell people about the glorious, glorious things that God has done, and that's what I feel like doing, man. I, you know, my wife sometimes she, she I'll be running up, to, I'll be at the gas station for, you know, run up to somebody, man. Oh and, no way! And, yeah, you know, just telling them about God. Yeah, man. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's like you know, um, I, it's just like, man, I, I got to. Yeah, I have to. It's not even something that it's not even in me. It's just like, man, it's the Holy Spirit. Yeah, oh, he just pushing me and telling me to go, go do it, you know. Man. So yeah, man. That's a, that 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 moment that you, you know uh, you say you say you were all sweaty. Uh, I, I'm thinking maybe like almost like delivered, like almost like a cleansing took place. Yeah, and, like he had to purge you, almost like all that. Like, yeah, came out and you mentioned that the yoke, the burden that you felt maybe lighter, something that you had been carrying probably most of your life. Like God yeah. just yeah man, t- t- took off and. So you experience that, you, you get that change, man, you want to tell people about God, uh, what, what happens in the relationship now? And I know you were still like girlfriend, right? A boyfriend, you know, yeah. that was your girlfriend. So what, uh, what, 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 what happens there? Like as time goes on, I guess. Man, we, um, we decided that we're going to like, man, we're going to do this, uh, according to God's way. You know, we're going to, uh, sleep in separate beds. We're going to go to counseling with the pastor. We're going to go through, you know, we're going to do everything the way it's supposed to be done, Man. you know, to make it right before God. Because if it's not right before God, it, it doesn't make a difference if it's right before me or you, but it's got to be right before God. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, man, like, you know, my, my wife is, is involved in, 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 in ministry and, and we, we go together, we do street ministry together and we just, man, all glory to God. It's just like, man, I, I look sometimes like, man, I... I'm glad and I'm thankful. It's like, man, God, I don't even deserve all this, you know? Yes. And I'm like, man, you know? So, yeah. And, and, and it's like, um, I always thought that I had, uh, uh, I worked a lot of years in prison. So I just like, this is, we can be going on all, all night. Oh, no, you yeah, know? whatever you want to share. Maybe there's some a story from there or something. That- yeah, we, uh, like when I got out, when I got in the Marine Corps, I had that construction job out there for a few years. When I came back this way, um, I worked for the sheriff's department in the jail. I worked corrections. I worked yeah, in the okay. jail, and then I worked in prison. I worked death row. I worked every no way every like section or unit you could imagine. You know, I worked it, and I look back, man, and I'm like, man, and a lot of them guys, some a lot of them guys I knew, like growing up. No way so that, that we're in there. Yeah, so it's almost like you know God was showing me. Yeah, it makes me think back to when I was a kid when I was my when my dad bought that weight bench home. And I was like, okay, that's going to keep my butt at home, yeah. you know, out of trouble. And it did, e- even though the enemy had plans and he was trying to t- deal with me, you know, to, to mess me up. But I look at these guys and I'm like, I grew up with this guy, I grew up with this guy, this guy lived down the street, you know. But when I, when I worked in prison, I wasn't saved. Right. So my conversations with them were not good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, right, right. So it's like, man, that's why I have a heart now for prison ministry, I, I, I you know, to juveniles and whatever, to go back as a man of God and talk to people. Not that I, not that I have all the answers, but I know who does have all yeah, the answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because I, you know, it, it's just amazing, you know, that 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 how God uses us, you know, and 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 um, just to go where 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 He's calling you to go and do what He wants you to do. And, and as long as he gets all the glory, yes, sir. You know, so man. So how, how did you get? I, I know you said you worked there mm-hmm. uh, in prisons. Now, when you started doing the prison ministry, were you still working there, or was it? No, through? this is this is just recently. Okay, this is just recently because it's been on my, uh, it's been on my heart. Okay, um, and then I was I saw uh, I went into a, a service a couple years ago, and um, a pastor, more well known pastor, prayed over me, and he said. You're going to minister to a, a, a different group of people. And what I took from that was, okay, prison, prison ministry. But it's turned out 
that even more than a prison ministry, I work in a steel mill. Right? Okay. I, I work in a, like the largest steel mill in North, North North America, right? Okay. Um, there's a lot going on in there. There's a lot. There's a lot going on in there. There's there's some things going on, and you know, it's like uh, it's like when you're in there with prisoners. You know, like you can imagine the language and the stuff they're talking about. Yeah. It's the same thing, and you know, in, in any environment, any work environment. But man, God has opened my eyes to to the steel mill is is a uh, is a place to minister his word. Okay. You know, because us as men, there's some men out there, you know, that I've come across that they won't sit here and talk about God in front of anybody because I don't know if they think it's not manly yeah, or yeah. whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, right, right. They, they, they're confused. The world has them twisted, but they'll pull me to the side and want to talk, yeah. have questions. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, I'm going to absolutely yeah. talk. You know, and, and, and I'll pray with you, do whatever. I remember the story, bro, a couple, and this has probably been about a year ago. A guy come to me in the locker room, and he was telling me about his daughter. He had kidney problems or something. And I said, bro, I said, because you got to be intentional. I said, what's her name? I'm not just yeah. going to say, I'm a, well, I'll pray for her. Yeah. What's her name? And he told me her name. And I said, okay, let's pray for her. And he said, no? <laughs> I said, yeah, bro. And he was like, what will he say? I said, I'll tell you what. I said, I'm going to pray. He said, out loud right now? And I said, yeah, man. <laughs> Make sure nobody's I looking. Said, yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I said, man, you yeah. just come in agreement, man. I said, can I put my hand on your shoulder? And he was like, yeah. And he put his hand on my shoulder. And it was the most beautiful thing. All glory to God that we sat there in this locker room and we prayed for his daughter. And that's what it's all That's what it's all yeah. about. Yes, sir. You know? Yeah, the, but, man, yeah. That, that heart that... Like you, you mentioned before, uh, you, you don't let me ask you about the anger. I, I know you know, now you're showing love. You know, you're, it uh, sounds like compassionate, man. Now when somebody's daughter's hurting, man, like, man, let's pray, man. I want to pray. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that anger, that rage, you feel like he, he took that from you or did he still yeah. try to flare up every now oh, and then? I still try to flare up. I, yeah. I've been through uh, deliverance yeah. uh, now and now I'm part of the deliverance ministry. And I tell everybody, even, you know, deliverance, uh, Deliverance is needed. It's it's a great thing, but you always have to make sure that you keep it. You keep touching up because you we can all let little doors open. Yeah, doors open here. So it's no shame that you know if 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 I'm struggling or right. or whoever you know. Hey man, I, man, I got angry twice this week. Man, what the heck? Yeah, then oh, yeah, I'm gonna go talk to somebody. You know what? Yeah, yeah. that one thing with me, I would say that anger, that rage, definitely there. And even even as a saved man, I would I would I would say you know I would admit that man that. Even years into my marriage, where it would like flare up here and there, and I, and then I think one thing that really stood out to me, um, um, I, th I forget who it was. I think John Maxwell said that you know how people say the older you get, the better you get. Like no, that's not true. He said the the older you get, whatever you are it expounds or, or or grows bigger or goes grows more of. And one thing I thought about, like man, um, like in my family, I seen like older family members where they still had that anger, you know, mm. that rage, and their kids didn't want nothing to do with them just because yeah. of that. And I, and it came to my mind, like, I don't, I don't want that to be my kids. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't want to be known as that angry old man. Yeah. So, man, I had to pray a lot and, man, work on it. And, man, God's still working on it, but I've seen the change. My wife's seen the change. So it's something um, that God does touch us, changes us, but there's certain things that it's almost like we got to, as yeah. we go along, he, you know, yeah. he still helps us. But, Absolutely. Uh, man, you, you brought up deliverance for uh, somebody that doesn't know what that means. Somebody's watching. Like, man, what, what, what's deliverance? Like, can you explain that a little bit? Like, um, Deliverance is, we all have, uh, we have spirits, okay, that are hiding in us, whether it's um, anger, depression, greed. I mean, there's so many different things, you know. So, it can be uh, binding and holding us back, you know. So with deliverance, uh, you go through, um, you answer a lot of questions. It's real. It's confidential. It's really confidential. You, you you answer questions about your background because there can be some things that that are uh, generationally yeah. passed down that you don't even know about that you're dealing with, or it could be, it could be uh, idle right now, but it could be passed to your kids or wh whatever, yeah. you know? So it's a, yeah, deliverance is, is, is a, is a good, is a fantastic way to, to, to get cleansed. Yeah. And then deliverance is only the first step. And after that, you have to walk 
you have to walk out that deliverance. You know, um, it's it's an everyday. Um, is it, there's prayers and and there's things. There's a, there's, a, there's there's a whole program that you follow with this deliverance. Okay. Because after you go through deliverance, if you don't walk it out, then you're gonna open up that door of anger. It'll be open right back up, and yeah. then with anger is gonna come in. You know, and they they they, they gang up, gang uh, anger and, and 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 depression, alcoholism, drugs, whatever it may, lust. Yeah. I and mean, this man, the enemy don't don't rest. Yeah, yeah. You know, he throws everything at us. Yes, he does. You know? So even if uh, you know, even if you you know, you could look good from the outside, but there could be something something deep down inside and in, in our gut or something, man, that 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 needs to be be cast out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know? Yeah, I, I I agree with that because uh, that's one thing that that I experienced when I came to faith, like uh, a deliverance, like uh, I I shared in the retreat. The throwing up where I was vomiting, like yeah. man, and it was a cleansing. And you're right, because God will cleanse us that deliverance. But then we gotta fill it with something. He fills us with His Spirit. But right. I know you probably word, prayer, right? Like yeah, okay, exactly. Man, also, so so that that's a a, a ministry that, that 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 you're part of. That yes, you're doing now. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. How, how yeah. did you get plugged in? Is that part of the church you go to that you guys? Yes, are doing? that's part of our. We have a deliverance uh, team at our deliverance ministry at our uh, at our church. Yeah. Nice. No, it's, good. it's definitely needed, man. Uh, um, I'm going to have somebody on here soon. I don't want to share too much, but he 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 came out of the, the occult. He was like going back. I know you mentioned demons. I don't know the people that are listening, whether they believe it in or not, but I, I do. I, I know because yeah. I experienced it. You mentioned hearing the voice, you know, the devil telling you, hey, man, just end it. There's no hope, no future for you. Mm -hmm. So the 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 spiritual side is real, you know. So so yeah. this guy was involved in the occult, like cleansings, doing all this. You know, a lot of people believe that there's like black magic and white magic, but it's yeah. all it's all witchcraft. It's all, it's witchcraft. all yeah. so yeah. So pretty pretty soon I'm gonna have somebody out here to to talk about that because it's it's becoming very common. Like I went with my wife to Five Below, you know, the store Five Below, mm -hmm. and they have a bunch of books. For kids, uh, how to how to do uh, um, how to read somebody's like fortune? It's all this psychic, all this opening doors right oh, there. Yeah, it's opening the doors opening to doors. the occult, and, and they make it seem like it's so innocent, mm -hmm. but it's not, man. This is all like demonic things yeah. that that people are introducing to their kids. So that's why I think it's important that that we talk about it because it ain't a lot of you know, unfortunately, even like a lot of believers. Uh, go into that man like getting their their uh, yeah, what do you call uh, it horse uh, astrology or, yeah, and all this uh, stuff yeah. you know uh, cards read and all uh -huh. type of stuff they, they don't know man they're dealing with with, with demons man yeah. and there's definitely nothing to play with there man yep absolutely so absolutely. Uh, 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 another um, uh, ministry you you mentioned is uh, you do a street outreach I believe you yeah, said yeah we, we do street uh, street ministry how does uh, that look like what do you guys do do you got a um, schedule for that um, yeah uh we I, we try to go out once a month. I've had a couple uh, surgeries, so it's kind of slowed us down a little bit, you know. Okay. But uh, we what we would do is we would go out and we would either uh, would feed feed people. We go to areas that, that need that need love. Yeah. They need to see the love of Jesus. Uh, if it's the winter time, we'll go out and we'll do a coat, a hat, glove, scarf donations. So we'll throw the SUV full of that that stuff, you know. We'll go and hit the streets. And, uh, you know, we'll just, first we'll just tell people, hey, we just want to bless, you just want to bless you. Why y'all doing this? We just showing people the love of Jesus. And after after that, you know, we don't uh, jump on them. You know, we're just like, hey, you know, can I pray for you? Is there anything you need to pray for? And, and most people, nine times out of ten, yeah. they'll, they'll, they'll share with you and be like, yeah, you know. Because uh, you know, that's like the shirt says, the church, yeah. with, church without walls. Nice, I like that. You know, oh, that's the kingdom, kingdom music. Yeah, kingdom, oh no man. way, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I've barely seen that. Nice. Yeah, um, you know, church on Sunday. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, but once we leave, once we walk out that door, man, church begins. You know, we got to take it to wherever people are because a lot, some people aren't going to make it into the building. Yeah, they're not going to want to go to the building. So. You know, I really, that's really in my heart that, man, wherever we go, we just got to show the love of, of, of Jesus and, uh, and, and just, and just talk, talk to people, Yeah. you know? Yeah. So we, we do that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try to come up with some kind of need that, that, uh, something that they might need, yeah. you know, 
uh, Holy Spirit put it, told me a couple months ago, hey, go set up, go set up by a dollar store and make prepackaged uh, bags with whatever, like whatever you would get at a dollar store. So I put out a bulletin at church and I was like, hey, two-faced deodorant with a light bulbs. I don't, whatever you need, right? <laughs> so we have, we, we, we made up a bunch of plastic bags and yeah. we set up outside of a dollar store. And we were like, it probably looked crazy, but that's okay. You know, excuse me. You know, hey, we, we just want to bless people with some stuff. To, and people look, and that's how we got their attention. You know, sure, we took uh, sure took some business from the dollar store, but that's okay. Right. We got to tell people about about God and, and pray for some people and love on some people. And, you know, so we just we just try to do, you know, stuff like that. Do stuff Man. for the community. and, and Nice. And, you know, and, and, and that's what part of the church you go to? You guys, yes. all, all these ministries? Yes. It's all oh, part of Come Alive Family Church. Okay, man, man. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know what? Uh, another thing you, you, you brought here, a, a box of books. Could, could you maybe bring a couple out and talk about what, what those are? And then maybe how, how people could get their hands on them. You know, maybe I'll, even if somebody's listening to this and, you know, if you, if you hear about this, I'm sure you you, yeah. you, you shared the information. and Yeah. Okay, so these are these are testimony books. But when we go out, we just, we kind of just tell people, hey, we had these books. I like this one right here, this veteran's book. I call it stories. I say, hey, I said, my story is in here. Because if you say sometimes to, you know, my testimony is in here, people no. are, they might get, you know, I don't want to say turned off, but this is No, they honest, would, because right away, the testimony to religion. Yes. Like, even when I uh, share some of the podcasts, I'll put, like, story. Because yeah. I, I come across the same thing. Right. Testimony, I don't want to hear it, but. Yeah, hey, a story, you know, a story, yeah. a story from somebody from the streets, a story from yeah. whatever. It'll, they'll be, they'll be more open to it. I think. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, a, a a really great guy from church, uh, Jim Barbarossa. This is one of his ministries, and he puts out these. They're called real life stories, and there's probably about eight or nine different uh, books. He's got a. a a truck driver edition where it's it's truck drivers who've come to Christ. You've got just regular books, just with normal people. You don't have to be. And then he's got these these three right here. I bought you, uh, I bought you some because yeah. to me these are the three that I pass out the most that I get to people. This one is real life stories of inmates, inmate to inmates. This is the uh, Spanish edition uh, of this one. No, this is just uh, uh, regular regular people. Oh, okay, stories. yeah, yeah, okay, regular people stories. And then this one is the Veterans Edition, and my story is in this one. Uh, and real quick about this, this one, this is the newest one. It's probably okay. been out, it came out right, I think, the week of the men's retreat. Oh, no way. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah. And since then, at, at, at the end, of the stories are, you know, our testimonies are only two, three, four pages, you know, and at the end is we have our contact information, our phone number, and our email. I've gotten phone calls all the way from, Massachusetts, Maine, Pennsylvania, out to Arizona, Colorado, of people, of guys just calling. They, they read my testimony, and they're like, wow, I dealt with the same thing, or I'm dealing with the same thing. You know? Man, God is so good, so perfect, so beautiful. I, uh, one story, a couple weeks ago, I get a phone call. It said, Vicksburg, Mississippi. So the wife always laughs at me when I get these strange phone calls. She's like, oh, oh we, we know what that is. So I answer the phone, and the guy's like, hey, I speak to Jimmy. And I'm like, speaking? He said, this is Larry. Okay, how you doing, Larry? He said, I'm in a surgical center in Mississippi with my wife, and I picked up one of these real-life storybooks that was on the waiting room table, and I read your story. And I'm like, wow. I said, he said, I just want to thank you for your service. And uh, I'm glad that you're still here, and I'm glad that you're serving the Lord. So I'm like, I'm standing in my laundry room with with the phone on speakerphone because I was trying to get away from the dog barking and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like almost in tears. And I says, hey, um, we talked for a couple minutes. I said, Larry, I said, do you mind me asking, is your wife okay? Because you said you're in a surgery yeah. center. He said, yeah, she's having a, a minor procedure. She's okay. I said, well, before we get off the phone, can we pray for your wife? He was like, that would be awesome. So he told me his wife's name, which I forgot. Yes. So here, here we are, a brother in Christ, but a stranger. Yes. All I have is a voice on this speakerphone as I'm holding my phone, and we're praying for his wife because of this book. Yes. And because of God is God. Yes, you yes. know. So it's like, man, come on, man. You know, you, man. It's, it's 
man. You know, so yeah, I I, I always tell people, you know, I I carry a I carry a couple with me or I have a little book bag, yeah, yeah. whatever. And uh and God will put the people there out, like especially with the veteran one. That one's close that's really closest to my heart. Um, we'll be at the gas station and I'll look over and I'll see a, a veteran's plate or something. I grab a book and I go over and there's been times where God has allowed me to pray for people at the at the speedway, at the gas station. Small conversation. Excuse me, sir. You're you're a vet? Yes, I am. I said, Oh, I'm a vet too. Hey, I got something for you. Yeah. These are stories. Stories about veterans. Yeah. You know, oh thank you. Hey, um, is, uh, is there anything I can pray we can pray real quick about? Oh man, I got I got a bad back or whatever. All right, let's let's pray. Yes. You know? So it's just like, man, <laughs> you know, it, I just it's amazing. God yes, it is. is Man, I can't even begin to. Yeah. No words. No, no yeah. words, man. Hey, hey, you know what? It was uh, uh, amazing. Like um, now, now looking back, there's a reason why the enemy wanted to take you out back then. You know, where that voice came at you hard. Or not, not only that one time when you said when you put the gun in your mouth and it yeah. didn't go off, and you said God's hand. You seen God's hand on it later on, years later. That man, he protected you. Or the other time with the pills and all that, because he knows that once you surrender to God that you were going to be a threat to him and his kingdom, you know, yeah, to the amen. devil and his, his kingdom, man. And that's why I tell a lot of men that that's why the enemy fights a lot of people so hard that they're, they're in that, that almost like that tug of war where part of them, like they're tired of living the way they're living. And they're like, man, maybe I should go to God, but nah, the enemy doesn't want to let, let him go because right. I tell them it's not just about you. It's about all those that you're going to, that God's going to use you to impact and reach. And that's why he wants, he wants you dead. Basically, right. you know, one way or another. Right. So just to, to hear what you're saying with the books and uh, the the call, like how, how does that make you feel when you get those calls now? Like uh, I, I know Man. it's all about God. I, yeah. I, I know you mentioned hey, it's all for God's glory. He's the one doing it. But how, how does that, that, that make you feel like when you get that call, man? Like, Man, it just... It just humbles you so bad, you know, so much. And then, I, like you just said, I just think, I was like, man, that's why I'm still here. And like you just explained it perfectly. You know, the devil want, wants to take us out because he doesn't want, he doesn't want uh, uh, us, you know, going and, and talking about the goodness of God. And, right. and, and he does, you know, so, you know, it, it's just like, it's like a picture that just, boom, okay, I, I see, I see now, you know. So, yeah, man, it's just like, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, real quick, for no, I you forget, go. No, no, yeah, go. There's a there's a, there's a couple things, man. You we were talking about uh, kids and stuff. Um, I was a I was a I was a knucklehead when my kids were growing up. Okay, so okay. we're only talking six years ago. So my my sons were already eight, teenagers, eight, eighteen. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and their mom, who God told me to go and thank her because she was praying for me, and I was like. So, so this is your first wife, my first your wife, ex-wife, yes, my first yeah, yeah, wife, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. So I did that. I told, I told my wife. Now I said, sweetheart, God told me to go thank her for praying for me, and I went to go visit my kid. They live in L.A., so I went to go visit them when they were home here okay. a couple years back now. And I said, hey, I just want you prayed for me every time you went to church, right? When we were married, she was like, yeah. I said, I just want to say thank you, thank you. You know, because I knew that was God wanted me to, to thank her. Yeah. And then also on that, my sons, uh, they saw the change before, of course, my ex-wife did because I didn't see her, but yeah, yeah. I saw my kids, right? right? Even though they were grown. Was, so we saw each other. And she would say, well, you know, her catchphrase was, you know how your father is. That's what she would tell my sons. You know how your father is. And my son told me one night in the driveway, this is just a f three years ago, maybe. He said, I told her, Dad, Mom, you don't know how Dad is anymore. Man, that crushed me. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, I was in tears. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when he said that, I was like, what? He said, I, I told her, I was like, Mom, you don't know how Dad is. He changed. He said, you know, and all glory to God, it just yeah. melted me like. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know? Man, because you, because the kids seen that that side of you, you know, like yeah. already at that age, and yeah, for them to to see, and then 
for God to give you almost that second chance to show him yes, yes. like a better way, you know, like that's who I was and yeah. that's not who I am because of what Jesus has done in your life, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, it's amazing. Absolutely. Hey, you know, let, let me ask you, uh, how can people get a hold of some of these books? Like I, I know he, he left me a box here, you know, yeah. so uh, if anybody's interested, uh, like on, on the show notes, I got my email address on there. You could uh, reach me on Instagram or uh, Facebook, and I'll definitely get some uh, out to those that reach out. I'll mail it to them. Uh, yeah. But is there another way, like for somebody um, else? Like, okay, you can go to www.reallifestorybooks.com. Okay. That's reallifestorybooks.com. And that's uh, Jim and Carla, who uh, it's called Step by Step Ministries. Man, right. man that, that's, if you need some quicker, yeah. I, I've got. I've got a garage with cases and cases. Oh, no way. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, my wife put, she's, I've got half of the garage with cases, like that that case right yeah. there. Uh, and then the other half is, ha has all our uh, hygiene and everything for the street ministry. So I got one wall, looks like Costco, and the other one looks like. <laughs> <laughs> like a bookstore? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> man, hey, you know, you praise God for all, all the work you're doing, the ministry, and man, for your life. Yeah. You amen. know what I'm saying? Is, is, is there anything amen. else that you want to share? Maybe a word, something that's. You know, in your heart, for anybody that's listening, you know, that's listening to these uh, stories, uh, uh, man, man, it's just like so much. As I as I talk to to men, like through the podcast, and a, a lot of similarities, a lot of men that went through stuff as as children, you know, whatever it was, you know, at home with their parents or all type of abuse, these to anger. There, there's a lot of men out there that are like that, and they're not yeah. gonna talk about it because as men, yeah. they they look at it like weakness, but it's just. I guess you could say ruining their life and the life of those around them in a sense, right? Because mm -hmm. they're yeah. lashing out, anger, rage. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, any yeah. word maybe for somebody that's going through that, like, you know, in um, their own life? like Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you said something that uh, I was ashamed of what I did. Okay, like this, for, for instance, 2003, when I put that gun in my mouth, right? I was ashamed. I didn't tell anybody, right? I was the enemy keeping... That's why, because when I tell people what happened, God gets the glory. Yeah. So years later, I'm like, whoa, you know, I'm not ashamed of this. So when 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 my buddy asked me, hey, you want to write your testimony and put it in this book? And I was like, absolutely. You know, because I went from being ashamed to unashamed. Yes, sir. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that, that goes for anybody, uh, men, women, whatever. But I, I'll speak from this. For how I was feeling for years I thought man I'm just I have this persona okay we had you know thank God I don't have that no more yeah yeah but you know we carry this persona as men thinking that we got it all together we'll handle it uh what but no there's nothing wrong with um I went years without crying and now you could ask my wife I cry at the drop of the I'm about to cry right now bro <laughs> So, <laughs> no, she, you know, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's the thing. That's God, right? Yeah, that's yeah. God right there, right? The same thing as far as, as talking. Man, I was the most quiet dude. Yes. I, you know, now my wife is like, she ready to leave church. And she said, you off in the corner talking to somebody else. You, you know, so that's all God. But what I'm yeah, saying is yeah. as men, man, that don't, 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 don't have a spirit of pride. Don't be, you know, uh, machismo. Don't, none of that stuff, man. Um, reach out. Seek another man seek a man of god not that 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 just to talk yeah. you know like i tell people I say, man i'm not i'm not nothing but you can talk to me yeah you know what i'm saying we can pray together we can you know we can talk about it you know so just man it, it's not a lost cause we're here for a reason and whatever we do man we just we just uh we want to glorify god in everything we do and the devil doesn't want that like you yeah. said so he'll keep that that muzzle on our mouth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So man, rip that muzzle off, man, and 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 seek somebody to talk to, whoever that may be, to, to help you out, to help you through these things. You know, maybe it's somebody else's Uncle John. Maybe yeah. it's your neighbor. Maybe it's your brother. Maybe it's you know whoever that may be. Don't carry don't carry all that baggage. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because that's all that baggage is doing. It's not only holding you down and tearing you apart, it's going to tear your family apart. Yeah. It's going to turn, it's going to tear the next generation of your family. It's going to just destroy everything in this path. So don't be ashamed. Talk about it. God is good. Yes, he is. And uh, man, I, I don't just, 
Love you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank yes, you, thank yes, you. Thank, thank you, thank you, you Jesus. Hey, you know, is, is there somebody that's listening and maybe just like the people and that read your book, they want to get a hold of you. Yeah. How how could they reach you? Uh, social media, email, numbers, something uh, you want to share? Yeah, uh, I'm on social media. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Jimmy Sutherland Jr. Uh, Instagram, uh, Jimmy Suth Jr. 13. Um, my phone number is it's 219 219- Three one five one six four four, and my email is Sutherland, all small letters S U T H E R L A N D I W at Yahoo. Okay, and man, I, I it'd be it'd be my honor to just to talk to people and just help whoever I can, man, and point them to the direction of the King of Kings. And that's what that's what we call to do. Yes, sir. And, and and even on the like when when I release the podcast, I'll probably release it maybe within a couple of weeks. Uh, on the show notes, I'll be able to put some of that information. Okay. I'll put you whatever uh, information you want me to put, uh, email and all that. That way they could just click on it and be able to, you know, to, okay. to contact you th- awesome. that way. But, uh, man, brother, uh, uh, to thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for being on here. Awesome testimony. Usually I ask my guests, you know, when we're getting to wrap up, maybe any any uh, final words that you want to share. And if you, could, if you could please uh, close us out in prayer, you know. So... Um. Final words, uh, man, just uh, no, none of us, men, women, whatever, we can't handle it by ourselves. So God is the answer. God is the, the, he's the way maker. He's the pain taker. He's literally everything that we ever need. But the key is surrender. You know, we got we to gotta drop it. 100%, not give, well, hey, man, I'll, I'll give God 90%. We got to give him. We got to give him everything because it's his. And when we give him everything, in return, we get everything from him. So, yeah. That's it. All right, man. Awesome. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, Father God, we just thank you for uh, this time that we get to spend talking and glorifying you. Father, you are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. You are perfect in every way. We just... Uh, We honor you, Father God, with every breath that you give us, with every heartbeat, Father, is yours. Father, right now, just massage the hearts of somebody that's uh, watching this or or is going to listen to it at some time, Father, that they not feel alone, that they know that you are with them, that you will provide for them, that you will be all they need, Father God. Father, just uh, bless the rest of this evening. Bless my brother here. Just bless everybody watching, Father God. Um, We thank you. We praise you. And we just lift up your name, Father God, like like no else. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus, amen. 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 Man, brother, th- thank you for your time. Thank you for driving all the way out here. And, man, sharing you, your brother. story definitely blessed me, man. Time flew by, you know. <laughs> wow. It, no, no, it's, it's amazing, man. Um. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. All that ministry work, uh, prison ministry, uh, street outreach, man, sharing these books and evangelism, man. May God bless you, your wife, your children and grandchildren. And, man, keep, you know, uh, uh, Come Alive Church, you know, Pastor Indio, all, all those guys out there. Man, I, I met a, a, a great group of guys out there. Oh, yeah. uh, man, so some of the men that I brought with me, one of them had just surrendered his life to, to the Lord. Yeah, and he was on the podcast too recently, and man, God's um, God really spoke to him over there at the retreat too. Yeah. Uh, a few of those guys came, and like now they're like on fire for the Lord. So I, mm. I needed that. Yeah, we needed that. So shout out yeah. to Pastor Indio. Th- yeah. Thank you for inviting us out there. Go ahead, bro. Right. It's it's crazy. I just thought about it right now. Oh, that uh, we, you were busy. You know, we're at the at the men's retreat, okay. right? I was busy. And man, the Holy Spirit was like, "Hey, man, go over there to to your bro right now. And introduce yourself and talk to him." And I was like, I'm going to do something first and go back. But literally, it was like somebody put the brakes on me. And that's when I went straight over to you. I said, what's up, bro? And kind of introduced myself when we talked. So if we didn't do that, then we wouldn't be right here. So thank you, Jesus. Yeah, you know, yeah, just yeah. being obedient. You know, yeah, yeah, I'll, do it la- I'll do it later. I'll do it later. You know? <laughs> you know what? And, and it goes back to something you shared uh, about being obedient and surrender. You know, yeah. we, we have to, like, constantly. It's, it's not a one-time surrender, right? Yeah. It's a... Yeah. Constantly as you're going through life, stop because we could get drawn, busy. I'm sure you had something to do at that moment, but yeah. stop and connect. And 
I, I know your story, like it's been doing through the book. I know through the podcast, it's, it's going to bless many, brother. You know, many need to hear your story and, and and to know that, that God could turn our life around. And no no matter where, no, no matter how deep in darkness we're in, his light could come. And, come on. And I, I love that, that that image you you were sharing about, even even at, at that age that you were, like a little kid, like, man, yeah. like holding up your hand to God, like, man, just take a hold of me. Yeah. And beautiful. Yeah. It's the, them hands are important because I always, the guys can tell you at Come Alive Church, I said, hey, when you're watching a Bears game on Sunday, are your hands in your pocket? And they're like, what? No. I'm like, get up there and worship. Get your hands out your pocket. <laughs> I'm a little rough around the edges. Hey, my, no, wife hey, said, no, hey. my wife says sometimes, she said, you're a little rough around the edges. She hey. said, but then my wife tells me, my beautiful wife, Carrie, I love you, honey. She says, uh, well, but, but by the way you look and your size, she said, they probably won't say nothing to you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, but you know what? I think, I think some of us men need that. Yeah. You know, we need that little push, a little motivation, you know, something to, to get us going, you know, yeah. and not yeah. to be, hey, like you mentioned, we could do it for the Bears. We could definitely do it for yeah. God, man. And I, hey, I need it too, man. Yeah. I, tell, I tell the guys that you see something, man, pick me up. Tell me yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So it's good to have brothers that, that have your, your best interests in mind. I just right. want to see you grow. I want to see you be the man, the the husband, the father that God's called us to be, you know? Yeah. Amen. So so with that, man, they, they, thanks, Jimmy. Thanks hey, for being out here, you, man. We're, we're going to get ready to wrap this up. Uh, so, yeah, th- 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 thank you guys for, for joining us for uh, another uh, another podcast or uh, show. Uh, Matthew 4.16 reads, The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. My name is Omar Calvillo. I am Wrong to Strong.